Carl Van Roon here at Van Roon Martial Arts. Today I'm going to be taking you through the spinning hook kick or reverse turning kick. In Korean this technique is called Bandedoryo Chagi which means reverse turning kick. Uh, in Karate, the martial art that I first started with, they call the Ushiro Moshigiri which means back roundhouse kick, pretty much. It's one of my favorite kicks. Honestly, you see it um, in all sorts of films and TV. Um, it feels amazing when you get it right. And one of the things I'm going to share with you today is how to use your kinetic chain or how your body moves in sequence to generate more power and more speed so you have an effortless technique. Ready to go? Okay, let's get started. Whenever you're throwing a reverse turning kick, or sometimes we call it a spinning hook kick, it has other names in different martial arts depending on what you're studying. We want to make sure that we're side on. So if I'm too frontal, it's going to be really telegraphed. And I can throw it, but it will be uh, easy to see. So I want you to stand side on, even if you don't usually take that as your fighting stance. We can talk later about how to get into this position and hide it, even if you stand a bit more frontal. For example, if you're a conventional kickboxer. Okay, so I'm standing side on like this, and I'll just show you one of the kicks first so you can get an idea. So that's my reverse turn kick or spinning hook kick. In this case, I elected to hit the uh, dummy with the ball of my foot. So I'm just basically giving it a slap. That's a lead leg hook kick. It's the same type of kick without a spin. If you're not familiar with the hook kick, I'd encourage you to watch my video on the hook kick technique so you can put the two together. But back to the spinning hook kick or reverse turn kick. When I throw that technique, I can use my heel if I want to cause more damage, or I can use my ball of my foot, the flat of my foot, if I want a little bit more reach. But what's the essential way of generating power and speed in this technique? The key thing is using your kinetic chain. You might be able to see behind me, there's the words written on the wall, sports science. So in sports science, when we talk about the kinetic chain, we're talking about how you use your entire body to generate power in a technique. So for example, when you're throwing a ball, you don't just throw with your arm, but you generate body from your hips and your shoulders, from ground reaction force, and finally it passes out through the ball. This is the same sort of thing with a reverse turning kick or spinning hook kick. So let's look at the sequence and how we use the kinetic chain to get that power and get that speed. The first thing you want to notice is I'm going to aim my heel towards the target. So rather than trying to spin on a flat foot, which creates a lot of friction, I'm going to lift my heel and aim it towards my target this way. This also sets up back kick or spinning side kick, 360 or tornado kick and other spinning kicks. So we'll be returning to this particular uh, approach in future videos as well. So we're pointing our heel towards the target as a starting point. My arms haven't turned yet. The second part is once my heel is towards the target with my weight back, as my weight drifts onto what will become my supporting foot, I'm going to wind up through my shoulders. And I'm going to do this in a specific way. It's the same way that dancers and um, gymnasts use to create more momentum so they spin faster. It's quite simple. It's about bringing the mass or the weight towards the axis of rotation. So on the spinning point. You'll see trickers do it like my friend GNT, Ginger Ninja Trickster. He'll bring his arms in closer to the axis of rotation to help him spin quicker. So the way we're going to do this for a sparring reverse turning kick or spinning hook kick is as I aim with my front heel, I'm going to take my arms from out and then crunch them in. I'm going to spin in on myself. As I do that, I'm going to feel tension in my body. I'm going to leave my leg behind on the ground until the point where I can't spin any further. At this point, my leg is asking to come off the ground. So once again, if I throw in a little quicker, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to aim with my heel and bounce to here. Again, and that's how we throw the technique. Now what you'll notice is my arms come from out to in, and then this tension of my body pulling around pulls this leg into action. Now a lot of the time, if you want to make it look um, big and open and dynamic, for example if I was throwing a kick for film, sometimes I'd be asked to throw it wider so it's more dramatic like this, swinging my leg. So it's easy for the camera and the audience to pick up. If you're throwing it for sparring though, generally you want to keep things tight and you want to make it quick and untelegraphed. 
So for that reason, I'd encourage you to practice coming through what I like to call the inverted chamber. So I call this an universal chamber, right? We throw things like side kick out of here, hook kick, etc. High turning kick. Many different kicks come out of that universal chamber. On the other hand, if I come this way, I call this inverted chamber. And if you notice, once again, how dancers or gymnasts uh, use this position, they use it to speed up their rotation. Once again, you also see it with tricking. So if you just try this simple exercise with me, to see how it can aid in speeding up your spinning hook kick, or reverse turning kick, you'll see what I'm talking about. Hold your leg out to the front, and just start to turn around in a circle. Turn around in a circle. Got the hang of that? Now, bend your knee at some point in that circling, and see the difference it makes. So I'm turning, I'm turning, and I tuck my knee in. You'll notice you spin a lot quicker. So the same principle that we apply to the arms, we're now applying to our legs. And we're spinning through this inverted chamber position, and then we're going to use a technique called the egg beater, this way, to mobilize the final hook kick. So let's have a look at that all together. Heel, weight is back. Spin the arms in to the center, the axis of rotation. Lift up through the inverted chamber. Extend out and make contact. Let's see that a little faster. Now, as for follow through, sometimes you'll find that you can kick and you can go straight through the target. Other times, you might hit somebody's guard and um, you'll have to bounce off the opposite way. Or you'll hit them full flush, but it won't be like the movies where they do a perfect sell for you and uh, you, <laughs> you land in a perfect Van Damme pose. Sometimes you'll have to learn to take your leg back from the way you came. So I'd encourage you to practice those as two options for recovery. So if I kick with my heel this time, looking to inflict a bit more damage, I'm gonna recover my foot in front. This time I'm connecting with my heel. You notice, as soon as my foot came down, I recover in front and I keep my posture up straight so I don't fall over. On the other hand, if I just sort of clip him, or it passes through, I recover right back, as I practiced before. So you might be asking yourself, does that kinetic chain principle apply if I do a jumping spinning hook kick, otherwise known as a flying reverse turning kick? Yes, it does. It's almost the same. You're just winding up your lower body with your upper body, except you're in the air this time. So if you recall, we lined up the target with our foot this way, pulled the arms in, so the mass is closer to the axis of rotation, came up through the inverted chamber to spin faster, and then we extended through into the kick. If I was going to do that in the air, I do the same sort of process, but I swing my arms up as I jump, and then kick around, once again, aiming with my heel towards the target. So I'll let you see that. So we would call that a flying reverse turning kick in ITF Taekwondo terminology, or a jumping spinning hook kick if you wanted to use terminology from WT or Olympic style Taekwondo. What about if you wanted to take it a step further and you wanted to do a 540 hook or a 540 reverse turning kick? Now, once again, I'm going to wind up my lower body with my upper body, but I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to wind up, then my leg is going to come around, and then I'm going to twist one more time, really drive my elbow around, and then come across with that. Just flick them on the nose. So now that you've got a bit of an idea about how to use the kinetic chain to improve this kick, let's look at how you use setups. If we're talking about Taekwondo, whether that's in, in the International Taekwondo Federation, or if you're talking about World Taekwondo, Olympic style Taekwondo, most of the time you'll see competitors standing side on. If you're less familiar with Taekwondo, this is so that we have longer reach in our kicking techniques off the, lead and, um, off the lead leg in particular. We make a smaller target and it makes it easier for us to spin quickly. Of course, if you were to apply those techniques into other rule sets, we can also throw low kicks or sweeps or takedowns. There are pluses and minuses to being in that position. So if you're a person who's in mixed martial arts or you're interested in martial arts more generally, not specifically Taekwondo, you might like to look to develop this technique from conventional techniques 
that you use in your own stuff. So I'll give you a few universal ones that I think are, are vital. So if you're going to throw a conventional jab, for example, let's say that you're squared up like this, okay? You've got a conventional guard and you're going to just throw a jab. Now a lot of the time when you step forward with that jab, you're going to step on the same line. You're going to step on the same line. Sometimes if you go a little bit more side on, you might get a little bit of extra reach. This is the type of jab that I'd recommend you use to set up your spinning hook kick or reverse turning kick. So what you can do is you might not want to spend too much time side on like that because it might expose your leg for, for example, a low kick, a low round kick. But for a moment, you might jab and cheat your foot into the center line. At that point, you can turn your heel and throw the technique. So if I was to do it, I might be practicing a jab here. You can cover it up that way. On the other hand, another way to throw it is as you throw the left hook this way, as you throw that left hook, that already begins the position where you want to throw that spinning hook. So you could be throwing left hook, maybe you miss that left hook shot, and you just simply follow through on that. That's another option. There's many, many ways to use this technique, and if you want to uh, apply it effectively in a, in a fight, I'd encourage you to look at it first and foremost as a counter-fighting technique. I would say that this technique is most effective when the opponent is kicking you and you use it as a simultaneous counter, particularly when they're trying to kick you in the head. To learn more about that, please tune into my uh, spinning hook kick video for counter fighting. That will be coming out soon. Thank you very much everybody for tuning in today. So that was the spinning kick or reverse turning kick tutorial. Let me know what you thought about the kinetic chain, those principles from sports science that we've borrowed to make our kick faster and more powerful. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more great Van Ryn Martial Arts content. Thank you very much, everybody. See you again soon.